Will I do a topless or will I do it with the top? <laughs> <laughs> this is Boxing Tickets and I in association with SB Sports and Chaco. Uh, we're here at Kilded Warriors Gym and we're delighted finally the the interview in person. Yeah, Thomas. Of course, yeah. Well, we've done, we done two previously, we've done one on Instagram. Um, that was awful. The, the only ever interview I've done where my face has really been in it, and I hated it. Yeah, that was a premier in Wi-Fi, that was, yeah. yeah. That's right, your, your Wi-Fi was messing about. And, yeah. then we, and then we had you on a week before your second pro fight, uh, back in October. I remember So that, I think yeah. it was the 23rd of October we last had you on. Um, so the last time we spoke to you, one and 0 with no knockout, you know, 2 and 0 with one knockout. I guess in heavyweight boxing, knockouts are the sort of... Things that put, as I guess, put bums in seats and sort of gains attention. Is it sort of good to get the monkey off your back early as a pro boxer and sort of? Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. I was raging after the first fight. I couldn't get the KO, but my mum was sturdy, solid in the first fight. Do you know what I mean? I think if I fought him again, I'd find it hard to get him out of there again. I'd get him out of there now, but I'd still find it hard. He was sturdy, compact and small. Do you know what I mean? And was quite negative. I thought so. Uh, rage. I didn't get the stop to me first fight, but I learned a lot from him. You know what I mean? I guess obviously your last fight was on the zone, and I think you probably spoke about since, and probably there, there's a bit of nerve sort of there you know you're 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 being streamed around the world and things like that did you feel sort of did you feel nearly as if at stages you were I think Paggy had sort of said to relax a few times sort of yeah wait and so, take your so punches. a lot of people say you know you seem nervous I was a tiny bit nervous but you know people say oh you must have been very nervous I wasn't nervous I was over eager I knew who was watching I knew the occasion so I was trying to force something that would come a lot more e uh, natural had I relaxed you know what I mean took a step back and uh, weighed up things a bit better, but I was trying to push it too far. But it's experience, you learn from it, you know what I mean? I won't do that again, even in sparring and practicing now, not being over here, you get someone hurt, relax, you know what I mean? Take a methodical approach to it rather than trying to blow someone out of the water because these fellas will just hold, you know, until I get up the levels a bit, they'll just hold, spoil, like you seen last time. I've done six weeks sparring out with Dillian White's camp with seriously high level boxers, no one's holding really, they're in punching on the inside and then you fight the likes of these guys and they just want to hold, they want to last around so they can fight again next week and earn a few bob, you know what it's, I mean? It's sort of, it's not like, it's, it's not like you're sort of slating them in a way, that's, that's their role, is they sort of last the distance, don't get knocked out so they don't get a 28 day ban. absolutely, of course, you know what I mean, you have to understand the game, you, you're only an idiot if you don't you know what I mean, see how it works, see how it goes, you know what I mean. Although your mum was good in me last fight, uh, had a decent record, 4-1 with three knockouts, you know what I mean. It's a good, good scalp to have because you don't see fellas fighting lads like that in the second fight. So, you know what I mean, he was a good scalp to have and uh, looking forward to getting the ball rolling now on the tour. Uh, and, as, and obviously, you know, what, what a statement. I know we, we'd sort of known, secretly nearly sort of in a way that, that it was sort of being talked about and, and kept it off social media. But, but what a card, you know, for your third pro fight. You, you sort of had the, the pressure sort of you can have with, you know, the last card you were supposed to be, supposed to be Dylan, Dylan White and Wallen, was Wallen, it? Yeah. And then obviously Dylan was obviously pulled out with an injury. And I guess for you preparing for your big sort of TV debut in the zone and obviously the matchroom card, and you're probably getting people messaging you randomly in the blue going, what's going on with Dylan? Yeah. Um, so sort of that probably brought a bit of pressure on itself and going, leave me alone, I'm yeah. my own boxer. Yeah, well, of course, you know what I mean? Like when you're away with these guys and you're with, with the likes of Dillian every day, people think that they can just text you, ask a question and you get an answer straight back. But I was in the dark as much as everybody else, you know what I mean? Very tight-knit team there. Uh, I found out before everyone else did, but still I wouldn't have known any sooner than anybody else, you know what I mean? They do a media release, I know a tiny bit before then, but apart from that, no inside information, you know what I mean? Of course, it's between Dillian and his team, and although I'm part of the team, I wouldn't be, uh, he wouldn't be ringing me up and saying, Jez Thomas, I'm pulling out my shoulder now just to let you know. You know, No, it doesn't work like that, you know what I mean? And do you think, obviously, we had not appeared on the card then, did it sort of take, did it put more pressure sort of on you yourself? Because if he had been fighting, say, for instance, he may not be able to uh, sat ringside and sort of yeah. cheered you on. Did it, yeah. did it change anything for your No, it didn't, nothing changed, no. It was great. The only thing that I will say is there was a bit of pressure that the, the card might be pulled, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? There was that bit of pressure. But well, fair play to the matchroom, they kept the card on, you know what I mean? I, I don't know any other promoter that with a big uh, main event like that that pulled out that they'd continue with the card. It doesn't happen, you know what I mean? Cards get pulled for stuff like that. So big shout out to Macho and Eddie and Frank for keeping the card going. Otherwise, I might not be where I am right now. You know what I mean? So everything happens for a reason. I'm delighted with that. It definitely is sort of month that we keep it. Everything happens for a reason. You know, COVID, I was obviously saying the Niall O'Connor earlier on, that people could obviously complain about COVID and everything else. 
probably we've been lucky in the fact that during the COVID time it wasn't going to be a, I don't think it was a packed stadium either. So, you know, it sort of helped in the fact that they were able to keep the show going because more people were tuning in on, yeah, you know, on the yeah, TV. Yeah, yeah. And the Chantel Cameron and Mary McGee, they sort of keep the, keep the show alive. Otherwise, yeah. you'd say you'd have been sitting in the house twiddling your thumbs waiting for more <laughs> fight news. Yeah, I know. And the way things went, I was meant to fight again before Christmas. Uh, fell through so you know this might be me next time to get out and it's not like Dillian said he wants to keep me active that's too big of a gap you know what I mean I fought in May last year then October too big of a gap you know what I mean uh, well the end of October almost November so um, that's not what they want ideally so thank god I got that for you bit of a gap now between that one and this one but at least the show's on the road and hopefully you know people get annoyed on me uh, at least way more fights than this year and I guess, you know, when we last spoke to you, I think your, your talk was then of, of uh, fighting Jason Quigley's card and that yeah. sort of didn't sort of materialise. It was too short, too, too short time, yeah. And I guess now you're obviously getting, getting out on a big card, like there's four Irish boxers in the card. You, you've Mick and Lee Wood main event, Gary Culley facing former world champion Miguel Vasquez, Kevin Adjarko and obviously yourself. I guess when you probably look at it, you probably think you'll be on before the main slot, but at least you get to enjoy the atmosphere of, of Nottingham packed out probably going to say about 60-40 probably in Lee Wood's favour. You've yeah. sold quite a few tickets yourself so there's quite a few coming over to watch you. It's interesting to say 60-40 because oh, any Irish fans I know count by two, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So any Irish fans I have coming with me as well are all mad so I'm looking forward to hearing the night. I, I reckon, you know what I mean, uh, the Irish fans that way the English no matter what. You know, uh, the noise levels and the yeah, atmosphere. noise levels and atmosphere was, you know. You know, I think we all get fed up with Sweet Caroline now and the English fans still sing yeah, about it, you know. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, but, yeah. But what a what a card, they sort of, I guess it's just sort of first it's great, real, it's great, yeah. First real yeah. taste of sort of being involved in Irish cards and I guess that, that bodes well for the future. Absolutely, absolutely. It's going to be a lot of boys, a lot of media boys on this this week, the whole week itself, you know what I mean? So I'm looking forward to seeing how things materialise and get a big performance in, big knockout again, that's some prediction. I know. Massive knockout with them gloves on, it's a different game with them. You know, Port Lads inspiring all the time you now, and uh, I'm really starting to sit down on my shots a bit more, so I'm looking forward to getting those gloves back on, not being as eager, nice and relaxed and seeing what I can do. And, and when we last spoke, I guess, you, you you hadn't really met Eddie probably really in person before when you were sort of around him in fight. Did you really get, because like Eddie's, Eddie's a media junkie, he sort of, he'll stand for 25 hours a day yeah, and do interviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you get much of a chance to sit down and I chat with him? I didn't have a massive sit down with him that we met, we spoke and uh, the gent has gone great, same with Frank. I had a good chat with Eddie, it's funny enough, I was going in to leave my bag somewhere after the fight and I was greeted by this man, I didn't know who he was at the start, it was with my brother, it was actually Barry Hearn. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, the legend. Uh, had, a, had a good chat with him. Yeah, the legend. Had a good chat with him. As I opened, he gave me some great voice and stuff like that. So uh, that's who I spoke to the most out of all the, you know what I mean, the top guys there in Matrim. So Barry's uh, Barry. the one that's made the impression the most? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barry's the legend. And it's because nobody really sees him anymore. He's obviously taken a step back, but he was there. A fair play to him. He had a chat with me, introduced himself to me and my brother, you know what I mean? Uh, very nice of him. You know? Did he give you any sort of tips? or? Just gave me some tips in terms of, uh, you know what I mean, going forward. Just, uh, it's hard to remember. It was just basically saying, you know, keep knocking them out and you keep putting bums on seats and uh, keep pushing forward and improving, you know, and that it's a tough game. But we all know that, you know, it's a tough game. And, and look, boxing sometimes isn't just all about, you know, your skill and everything else in the ring. You need to be able to sell tickets. You need to be able to obviously get people talking. You know, does that sort of add a bit of pressure on yourself? Do you know that you, you might, you know, do you nearly force to sort of go for a stoppage? No, look, I... The whole idea, I box to get stoppages, I enjoy, you know, I enjoy, sounds bad now, I enjoy hurting people in the ring, that's the whole idea, it's like scoring an overhead kick, isn't it? That's, uh, you know, you want to do it as flashy as you can, you know, no one just wants you to, you know, go around the keeper and slide in the bottom corner, you don't want to score flashy bleeding knockouts, you know what I mean? People want to see big guys and flashy knockouts, that's what they want to see, you know? That's why everyone waits around, even in the stadium, in the amateurs, you wait around for the super heavyweights, because you get big fellas throwing big ladder and hopefully someone get sparked out and a lot of the time they do you know and the people enjoy that for entertainment it's a blood sport it really is you know yes, I think everybody remembers the Colombian goalkeeper remember I think it was the offside or something like that remember he done like the, the scissor kick oh yeah you know yeah. it's like a scorpion kick they call yeah, it yeah you yeah you know but yeah. everybody remembers that people love that stuff you know what I mean so the flashier the better and the, the more vicious the better you know and like obviously Alan Babbage is obviously a stable mate you under Dillian White he's sort of you know 
it's sort of Jekyll and Hyde sort of approach to the fact that you either like him or you hate him, sort of like Marmite. But but he's doing everything right in terms of he's, he's stopping people. He wants to get beat. You yeah. know, I I like I know at times when he fought Neil Kennedy and things like that, you're sort of going. We won Nile, they won those and everything else, and you're sort of going, we don't like him, you know. Yeah. And then when you see him now, he's going, somebody just lamb one on me, beat me, I want to get beat, I don't yeah. care about me, oh. Does it sort of the same mental, probably not really as mad sort of as he is, but do you sort of have to take a vision of what he's done to get himself regular fights? Of course, absolutely. Look, he, he's done a great job with himself, but everyone's path is different, you know what I mean? Everybody's path is different. Um, Bob has done a great job, and with Dillian and the team have done a great job promoting Babbage and getting them the opportunities, you know what I mean? My part is going to be different, but hopefully I can take something away from everybody, yeah? That's, that's what boxing's all about, just sort of taking wee small clips from everybody. Of course, and, all and experience, it's all learning, and it's all doing things that's right for you. You know, there's no path laid out that's been walked before that's going to suit me, you know what I mean? I've done things my own way, and my own pace, you know what I mean? Whether it be fast or slow, you know what I mean? Medium pace, do it in my own way. And, and sort of not looking too far ahead, and obviously your next fight, four weeks tomorrow, um, but obviously your your manager and Dylan White, you know, it was obviously agreed it's gonna be fighting Tyson Fury. Would that be sort of maybe your next goal you could sort of or is that you sort of being too lucky sort of in a way? Would you uh, like to be on the undercard? Yeah, anyone can dream, you can manifest these things, but uh, I text my manager, you know, Dillian officially my manager, but I text the team, I said, listen, I need some tickets. When it was announced I need some tickets after the first bit, ringside, I said, I can't miss that. And they said, I thought you'd be texting looking to get on the undercard. So who knows? You know, I, I said, I thought you'd have no pull. He said, we'll always have pull. Who knows? Who knows? Particularly when, he, when he's involved in it, you know, the, the big fight. You know, I think they're talking, I think the last they talked there was the 23rd of April and potentially Wembley. You yeah. know, um, you know what do you think of, of you going there? And you, you've obviously sparred with AJ and everything else, but he's at the big nights in, in Wembley. Yeah. They then potentially walking out. Like I remember, was it AJ's sixth or seventh fight? He fought obviously there, and you're sort of, sort of there going where you're actually getting the relive sort of what he came yeah, through as well. Yeah, but yeah. The, like, it's um, it's a me- like it is. It's crazy. It's a bit surreal where I'm at in my career. It, it really is. But uh, one thing for sure, I'll be at that Fury and Dillian White fight, regardless of whether I'm fighting or whether I'm not there as a fan, because it's going to be a part of history, I think. It's going to be a really big night, a very surprising night for a lot of people. And, and I'm not going to obviously ask sort of opinions, I guess, sometimes, because you can't really go against Dillian. Yeah. You know, not that obviously you've told me anything different off camera, but it uh, probably wouldn't be fair because your management won for you to give a sort of real opinion. But yeah. Is, it, is heavyweight boxing starting to get sort of more interesting in the fact that, you know, you're seeing two slick, two slick heavyweights yeah. sort of changing up. The, the old guard of boxing was people were badly overweight. They yeah. couldn't sort of, it was like big one-punch knockouts, you know, you'd your, taste, your Mike Tyson and things like that, whereas Uzak and, and Tyson Fury sort of changed, yeah. changing the guard, so to speak. I think, you know what I mean, there's always going to be old-school trainers, but I think sport as a whole, regardless of the, the sport you're in, is evolving all the time, you know what I mean? Even with the likes of sprinting uh, 20 years ago to now, it's improving all the time. Football doesn't look the same as it did 20 years ago. Boxing is so different as it was 20 years ago. So sport's evolving all the time, you know what I mean? And uh, there's a lot more science-based training being introduced now. So that's why heavyweights are stronger, fitter, faster. You'd have a lot of old school guys say, you know, boxing these days about who has the best training conditioning coach because people have forgotten you know the old school love of boxing and the old school techniques but it's a combination of everything sports evolving you need to involve with it or you get left behind you know UFC is a great UFC a few lads have gone mad for me calling that MMA is a great example you know UFC have a performance institute they're always running studies they're always trying to improve and see what's optimal to do training wise you know rather than you know still doing what people did 20 years ago because it's not done anymore there's bits of it and I know success leads to clues but you need to get with the times you know you need to be open minded because it's not a closed minded especially boxing it's not a closed minded game you know what I mean I'm guessing when you're, when you're, when you're sort of talking there the dream of of um, potentially fighting on, on probably the biggest British British all British clash in, in years but but obviously if you didn't get on that I guess with a, a close second be Katie Taylor and Serrano and of course you know the dream 
I don't know about anyone else, but the dream is to fight Madison Square Garden in New York, you know what I mean? That's the, one of the dreams. For me, it was always Vegas and uh, New York, you know? So to get something on the card like that, you know, the biggest women's fight of all time, one of the biggest fights of all time, I think, personally, uh, it'd be amazing, yeah, it really would. But let's take it one at a time, we have uh, Conlon versus Wood, and then we'll see where we're at then, you know? How do you see the fight going, I guess? Obviously, you're going to be siding with Irish and everything else, but, yeah. but sort of, you know, I guess we're always going to side with Mick as well, but I, I sort of look at it in terms of Frampton Quick. You yeah. know, it's sort of, you know, Quick was sort of seen as a puncher and stuff at times, but I don't know, me myself, I think of Mick's probably classier, you know, he can sort of box both stances, he's really good in his feet. How do you sort of see the fight going? I, think, I just, personally, I think Mick is too good. Way too good, you know what I mean? I think his leagues are both, no, no disrespect to Wood, that's just an opinion as a fan, not as a boxer now, this is me fan head I'm using. I think Mick is too good off the bat, but Wood obviously has a puncher's chance. That's how we see it going, you know what I mean? Definitely, as I say, it's, it's elite level, it's a world, it's a world championship fight, you know what I mean? They're fighting for a world title, so it's elite, it's Premier League stuff, you know what I mean? So it ain't gonna happen, but just from the outside in, uh, Conlon's too good. And, and seeing that atmosphere, I guess, as well. Obviously, you've been to plenty of fight cards and stuff before, but, but seeing that atmosphere, I guess it'll sort of keep you dreaming more and going, I can't wait the MMA event and walking out there. It's madness. I've been to some condom fights. I've been to the failures and stuff like that. There's nothing like it. You know, I've been to an awful lot of sports events around the world. I've been to all sorts. I've been to... Um Baseball, well, baseball's a bad example because that's quite dead. Uh, but uh, I've been to everything, you know what I mean? And there's nothing like a Michael Conlon fight because Belfast fans are mad. And this time you're going to have the combination of Belfast fans and Dublin fans. And that's going to be meant. You know what I mean? They'll have to double up on security that night because I can see a few ringing bells. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, even even the police in Nottingham area, you know, the, the place will be swimming in beer, you know, the, they'll probably they'll, have to stock up six months They'll beer. drink the place dry, yeah, big time. Big they definitely time. will. Um, but look, obviously, I know you've done a couple of interviews today. You've obviously, Friday doesn't stop for you now. You're going to do a. Sparring and going to lift the weights now, yeah. Definitely never stops. But, but well, thank you once again for chatting with us. Anytime. And I'm sure we'll obviously catch up with you fight week in Nottingham as well. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, looking forward to it. Cheers, Thomas. Take care.